Ever since that Consumer Reports article from a few weeks ago warned people about heavy metals in chocolate, we've been getting daily emails asking about the levels of heavy metals in our cacao and in our chocolate products. I've personally been writing back to every single question, but I also wanted to share this information directly with you here as well. We do of course have our cacao third party tested for heavy metals and it has no mercury and the lead and arsenic levels are so low that they're just barely above the limit of the minimum amount that the laboratory can detect. The cadmium levels are very low as well, so they equate to about 21% of the EPA's daily recommended cadmium limits. And these are naturally occurring in the mineral rich volcanic soil that really makes for the best cacao, both from a nutritional and a flavor perspective. And these results that I'm talking about here, these are from the testing of our cacao powder. So this is the most concentrated form of our cacao. So the levels that you'll see in our cacao nibs or in our finished chocolates are gonna be even lower. Now, I do wanna also share some perspective here because one big criticism I have of the Consumer Reports article is that it's entirely based on California Prop 65 limits. And Prop 65 is infamous in the natural products industry for having set levels so low that it's nearly impossible for any natural product to be fully in compliance because many of these things naturally exist in the soil. So let's compare, for example, Prop 65 levels to other sources of lead in our lives. So Prop 65 lead level limit is 0.5 micrograms. Now, according to the World Health Organization, on any given day, on average, just breathing is gonna give you four micrograms, drinking water will give you five micrograms, and consuming food is gonna give you somewhere around 20 to 90 micrograms of lead into your system. One serving of cooked sweet potatoes or spinach will give you about 13 to 14 micrograms. Our cacao has 0.25 micrograms. So we are below Prop 65, but you get an idea of how crazy low that level is. If a cup of spinach is gonna put you like 25 times over the limits. Now you might be wondering, how are these Prop 65 safe levels determined? They look at the research and they find the level of a specific compound like lead that is shown to cause no harm. They take that level of no harm and they divide it by not 10, not 100, by a thousand and they set that as this Prop 65 safe limit. So if research shows that consuming something at 10 micrograms a day is safe and causing no harm, Prop 65 will set the level at 0.01 micrograms. So this is why nearly all products sold in California have to have these Prop 65 warnings on them. Most businesses even are putting up Prop 65 signs outside the business just to protect themselves. For example, if you go into Disneyland or a five-star hotel in Beverly Hills, you're gonna walk by a Prop 65 warning sign just because breathing the air on their property might put you over the Prop 65 limit for certain substances. Now, Prop 65 was first put into place with good intentions to protect people from industrial pollution. But since then, it's been co-opted by lawyers who make careers by suing small and medium-sized businesses and kind of forcing them to settle and pay tens of thousands of dollars for not being in compliance. Now, we are, of course, all for minimizing heavy metal consumption within reason. And you've heard me talk in my videos all the time about the benefits of heavy metal detoxification. But in my opinion, to write an article like this that is so strongly worded, entirely based on Prop 65 levels, this is just really excessive fear mongering when it comes down to it. The writer happens to have chosen chocolate to write about, but honestly, a similar article could have been written about more than 95% of products that you would find in a health food store. So if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to call us, email us, send us a DM. We're always here to help you on your health journey.